In this video, we will go through the for loop. As we have already discussed about loops, like whenever we want to iterate some set of statements multiple times, we will go for the loops. And here, let's see when to use this for loop. As whenever we know the number of iterations, it is recommended to go for the for loop. But these are all the standards only. If you are comfortable enough with any particular loop, you can replace one loop with another in any situation. Like no program is designed for a specific loop itself. For example, if I say it takes me three steps to reach that particular point, I know the number of iterations, I will do it like one, two and three. I reach this particular position. I can also say it like that, keep walking unless and until you reach that particular point. So again, I will do the same task. All right. So the number of movement is same. It's all about how you are planning for a particular loop, whether to a particular condition or to up any number of executions. All right. So it is just a real life example like walking is a very common example of an iteration. You keep on moving your legs like that. All right. So here is a flow chart like let's see how this for loop actually works. So as you can see, this for loop is classified into three parts that is initialization, condition and the increment or decrement whatever. It's similar like that initial point like from here I started condition unless I reach there or number of iteration three, it will check that particular condition. And obviously to reach there from here, I'll have to keep on moving. So this is the increment. So initialization, condition and increment is the three major parts of this for loop. All three are optional, but make sure like you have put, you have put two semicolons in the parentheses of for loop. And inside the loop, there is a conditional code which will keep on repeatedly executed. All right. So let's see what is the flowchart saying now. In it is the first part. At the first part time, this initialization will take place only for the first time. After the initialization has been done, we will come and see the condition. If the condition is true, only then we will come inside. Otherwise, we will come out and the loop will be terminated. Now, if the condition is true, we will execute the code block. What's next? Then we will do the increment or updating the value. All right. So after this increment, we will again check the condition. If the condition is true, we will again come inside and will execute it. So it will keep on doing like that unless and until the given condition is true. If it is false, we will come outside. So this is how your for loop actually works. And let's see how you can write a particular for loop. So as here you can see, there are two different varieties of a for loop. Like here, I'm doing the increment and here it is decrement. I equals to one, that is the initial point. Where you want to reach? You want to reach 10. So I should be less than or equal to 10. But how to make this i which is 1 to 10? I'll have to make the increment. All right. So i plus plus. Similarly here, I initialize the value of i with 10. And this loop should go on till i value is greater than or equal to 1. i is 10 and till 1. I'll have to decrease the value. So i minus minus. So this is how you can write a basic for loop. Now let's go on system and see how to write the basic programs in for loop. In this example of for loop, I'm doing a very straightforward task. That is, I'm just taking a number from the user and stating whether that number is prime or not prime. For doing that, I have taken a Boolean variable called is prime, which is initialized with true. I'll tell you how it will affect the program. And after that, I have taken a for loop. As for checking a number, whether it's prime or not, I'll have to divide it with several numbers. For example, 
if I have taken the value 25 from the user it will not be divided by 2, 3, 4 but it will be fully divisible with 5 so it is not a prime number so for doing that task there is a loop which is initialized with 2 because all the numbers are divisible by 1 so I'll start with 2 and till the square root of that number so for getting the square root I'm using this math class which is there in the system namespace and inside this you will get this square root function so it will get you the square root of that particular number and I'll just have to check till that particular point now right here you can see I'm checking the num mod i where i is coming from loop if this condition is never satisfied we will never come inside so by the end of this loop the value of is prime will remain true itself because inside this condition I am changing it to false and initially it was true so if this condition got never satisfied by this particular point is prime will only containing the true and if it is true we know this statement will get printed but in any situation this condition got satisfied like I have taken the I have taken the example of 25 25 mod 2 will not be 0 25 mod 3 is not 0 mod 4 is not 0 but 25 mod 5 will be 0 so in that particular situation this is prime will become false and we don't need to compare it further when we will come outside of this loop is prime is already false so this else statement will get printed so this as statement will get executed and number is not prime will be printed in the output making the nesting of loops is always your choice on the basis of the requirement of the program as here in this program I am just checking a single number whether it is prime or not but in case if my requirement says like I want to print all the prime numbers from 1 to 100 so for that particular task we'll have to make the nesting like here I'm just comparing this single number I'll have to get this number from a loop now so I will just say like num should be between 1 and 100 and I will put all these statements inside this loop so you see nesting happened because this loop is now inside this loop now we will not get a single num but we will get the num from 1 till 100 and I don't want to print this message rather I want to print the number alright and let's remove this else statement because if it is not prime I don't want to do anything as I said earlier everything is on my requirement let's make it console.write and now let's see the output so you can see 1 2 3 5 7 all the prime numbers till 100 got printed to make this press any key to another line let's put the console.write line here and yes it is clear now all right so all the numbers from 1 to 100 all the prime numbers from 1 to 100 got printed now you can do whatever you want to do like summing it or whatever task